All right, y'all. Peace and blessings. God bless y'all. I'm Jarvis Kingston, and I hope y'all doing all right in these times that we're in. Now, today I want to discuss about career success. You know, when you're young and you're going through the school system as a child and teenager, what's always stressed upon you is talks about your future and your plans and what are your goals, what career do you want to have. And many people have different interests in different field of studies or different endeavors that they want to dive into. Some people want to be in a medical field. Others prefer to go to law school. And many other people choose different professions that they feel fits their hobbies or their gifts or talents or what have you. And it's important to have good plans and great things in store for ourselves. You know, it's important to have plans and goals that we really want to reach and set. And we always want to keep doing it over and over. You know, everyone wants success and everyone wants the finer things in life and we all know we have to truly apply ourselves and plan and be strategic and work really hard and smart towards it. But as these times go along, we start to see that a lot of plans don't always fall through. A lot of things that we said we always wanted to do, we end up not doing it. Some of us aren't really a man or a woman of our word. Sometimes we switch courses or switch plans or you know switch up our goals because of certain circumstances. You know, you might lose an interest or desire something, so you decide to settle for something else. Or a woman might get pregnant, or she might have a few children or get married, and her goals and future might change as well. And then other people, they don't care what circumstances they have. They still end up getting their goals, and they're very ambitious, and they end up getting it anyway. But all in all, you know, it's very important that we keep God first in everything that we do. Um, we really want to seek God and um and our plans and desires, you know, because we always have our own selfish ambition. We always have our own self-interest and we always have things that are for self-glorification. But is our career and our work centered around God? Is our success really God's will for our lives? You know, it's very important that we evaluate and ask ourselves that because sometimes people end up worshiping their own career. Some people end up worshiping their own job. Some people end up worshiping their own status. They end up worshiping their own accomplishments, their own degrees, their own titles, you know, and things like that. You know, once people kind of get into that corporate world or they get into those certain work fields or work environments or st a study of fields or whatever endeavor they decide to get into, they end up kind of getting lost in that. And they don't put God first anymore. They don't center anything around God no more Any every time they do something it's based around validation or self glorification or trying to prove something so bad and um, sometimes you have to reel that back and kind of ask ourselves who are we outside of this you know what type of person am I outside of this job or career that I have you know would I really be the same person I am if I didn't have this going for myself or if I didn't have this job or career would I treat people the same way that I'm treating people you know what I mean? Those are the type of things we have to ask ourselves because some people, they get a little status, they get a position, they get a title, they start making a certain type of salary, and they tend to treat people bad through that. They tend to look down on people. They they tend to do job shaming. You know, they tend to just really get real negative. They get really corrupted by the things that they obtained and worked hard for. And it's very important for us that we find success in God. That we have a great career for the Lord. You know what I mean? Like what career does God truly want us to have? Like what's our identity in Christ? What does God want us doing for him? What are we doing for the kingdom of heaven? You know what I mean? What's our spiritual career looking like? You know what I'm saying? What's our spiritual resume? What have we built for God? What have we done for the Lord? What have we put time into for God? You know what I mean? Those are the type of things we have to reflect about as we're out here. You know, because... A lot of people's careers are definitely going down the drain and going towards a different direction because of so much going on with the pandemic and unemployment and layoffs and businesses going down to business and uh, bankruptcies. All types of things are shutting down and going down south. The economy is so lopsided, unbalanced that nothing is guaranteed anymore. Nothing is having longevity. Nothing is for sure anymore. Um, so as this corporate entities are going down the drain. Many people's jobs and careers are going down a drain as well. So now everyone is finding different things to do. 
such as side hustles or content creating or getting into investing or Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, you know, things like that. Everyone's having multiple different backup plans and last minute things that they're getting success in, you know, because when the pandemic broke out last year in 2020, everybody resorted to working remotely and staying at home. Everybody resorted to uh, cryptocurrency and investment. Uh, people resort to content creating and TikTok and social media and YouTube, you know, things like that. So our careers can always switch courses and things could always uh, get unpredictable in this journey. So we always have to stay prayed up and keep God first in everything that we do. And ask God to bless our hands and bless the things that we're doing. You know what I mean? So I just want to read a few scriptures concerning something like this or similar to it and just go from there. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 11, verse 6. Sow your seed in the morning and do not be idle in the evening, for you do not know whether morning or evening sowing will succeed, or whether both of them alike will be good. The book of Job, chapter 22, verse 28. You will also decree a thing, and it will be established for you, and light will shine on your ways. The book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 3. Commit your works to the Lord, and your plans will be established. The book of Job, chapter 42, verse 12 through 13. The Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. And he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and 1,000 yoke of oxen and 1,000 female donkeys. He had seven sons and three daughters. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 10. Whatever your, fi whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. For there is no activity or planning or knowledge or wisdom in Sheol where you are going. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 22. Without consultation, plans are frustrated, but with many counselors, they succeed. The book of Isaiah, chapter 48, verse 17. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord, your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way you should go. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 5. But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all generously and without reproach. And it will be given to him. The book of Third John chapter 1 verse 2. Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health, just as your soul prospers. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 16. Making the most of your time because the days are evil. The book of Psalm chapter 90 verse 12. So teach us to number our days, that we may present to you a heart of wisdom. The book of Psalm chapter 20 verse 4. May he grant you your heart desire and fulfill all your counsel. The book of Genesis chapter 4 verse 4. Abel on his part also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel for his offering. Alright, so as you can see there. Um, you know. It's very important that... You know, we do everything with all of our might. You know, God blessed our hands. He blessed our health, our ability to get things done. So we have to go out and accomplish things, whatever our job or career is. You know, make sure you go out and handle that. And you dedicate it to the most high. You know, because that's what it's all about. You know, God blessed us with the abilities to have the things that we have. We have to appreciate it and be grateful for it. We can't take it for granted. Don't take your grips for granted. Don't take your ideas of creativity for granted. Don't take opportunities for granted neither. You know, opportunities are hard to come by nowadays. Opportunities and windows are slow, are, are slim and slow. So you get an open door, you get an opportunity, you know, pray on it, ask God, seek God about it first. And if God lets you prosper, proceed in it, then do your thing and handle your business. All right, the book of Joshua, chapter 9, verse 26 through 27. Thus he did to them and delivered them from the hands of the sons of Israel, and they did not kill them. But Joshua made them that day of hewers of wood and drawers of water for the congregation and for the altar of the Lord to this day in the place which he would choose. The book of Second Samuel, chapter 5, verse 4. David was 30 years old when he became king, and he reigned for 40 years. The book of Psalm, chapter 90, verse 17. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and confirm and confirm for us the work of our hands. Yes, confirm the work of our hands. The book of Psalm, chapter 138, verse 8. The Lord will accomplish what concerns me. Your love and kindness, O Lord, is everlasting. 
do not forsake the work of your hands. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 22. I have seen that nothing is better than a man should be happy in his activities, for that is his lot. For who will bring him to see what will occur after him? The book of Matthew chapter 9 verse 37 through 38. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Therefore, beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. The book of First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 25 through 26. Now concerning virgins, I have no command of the Lord, but I give an opinion as one who by the mercy of the Lord is trustworthy. I think then that this is good view of the present distress that it is good for a man to remain as he is. Let's see. The book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 through 2. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love, just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us and offering a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. So as you can see, you know, it's important that and what we do with our hands, our ideas, our careers, our jobs, our activities that we dedicate it to the Lord and we be happy in it. You know, we have to remember that God wants us to be happy and joyful. These times we are in are very chaotic and unpredictable, but don't let that disturb your inner peace. Don't let that disturb the peace that God has gave you. Peace is the fruits of the, of the spirit. That, that peace and joy is going to keep you in these last days that we're in. You know what I mean? So understand that wherever you're at in your life, whether you are unemployed or employed or you just got fired, you just got laid off. You got placed on a plumber, you got furloughed. If you got a promotion, you got a raise, you got a bonus. Wherever you're at in your life, ask God for more wisdom. Ask God for more love. Ask God for, you know, much more peace in everything that you do and that your situation does get better through it all. All right. So I pray that whoever listens as much as I pray that you get baptized, you start your life over for the Lord. I pray that your life gets better. I pray that you have new beginnings and that you get new wonders and signs and miracles. I pray that wherever you're at in your physical life, your carnal life, whether it's dealing with your job or career situation or if you're lacking one or wherever you're kind of at, that let God steer you in the right direction. Let God lead you and place you in a better position than you were before. All right. Whatever was lost or broken or sabotaged from you. Let God restore that double, triple portion, a hundredfold, a thousandfold. Let God bless you abundantly and let not, don't let your work go empty handed. Don't don't no more empty trips. No more things going void. Everything's going to have a reason and purpose for what you do from now on. I'm Jarvis Kingston. I got much love for y'all. God bless y'all. Peace.